Welcome back to Yahoo Finance. The jobs report today showed an eye-popping unemployment rate, but that report doesn't only tell us about how many people lost their jobs, but how those people may actually find jobs in the future. It's time for Yahoo. You, Brian Chung, joins us now to explain. Professor, you're on. Well, class is in session, and we know that tens of millions of Americans lost their jobs amid the coronavirus-related shutdowns, and we saw that in the jobs report this morning. But the report's got a lot of really good granular detail on the sentiment of those workers that are really currently trying to work through the COVID-19 related crisis in ways that the 14.7% headline unemployment number might not show you. And I wanna bring up some slides here that kind of illustrate that. So the unemployment rate, as we know, uh, rose up to 14.7% for the month of April. That's a pretty sharp spike from 4.4% uh, that we saw for the month of March. But when we look at the 14.7% number, what are we actually looking at? What we're actually looking at is something called U3 unemployment. And here's how they actually calculate it, right? They take the total amount of people that are not working, total unemployed, and they divide it by the civilian labor force. It's pretty simple, right? But not exactly, because what does total unemployed mean? The BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, defines it as the uh, people that do not have a job but are looking for one. But the problem is that there's many different types of unemployment, right? There's marginally attached and also part-time. So what I just showed you that's in that 14.7% figure is just this. Again, the people that are looking for work, but they're not looking. But then there's marginally attached here. And this is the people that we really want to focus on for COVID-19. It's the people that have given up looking, but they still want a job. And think about how many people would be in this category, right? They might not be looking for a job because they're too scared to be out there because they don't want to be at risk of getting COVID-19. But then also there's just no jobs out there, right? Think about Indeed, the job posting site. Their postings are down 40% year over year because no one's hiring right now. So a lot of people are going to be in this category. And then lastly, there's also part-time workers, right? People who have had their hours scaled back as a lot of shops just say, we don't need to be open for as long as we used to be. So even if you only lost five hours off of your 40 hour work week, you're no longer considered a full-time worker under that headline unemployment rate. And here's the thing, there's a lot of people that are in these two categories, which you would not have seen under that 14.7% figure. So how do we then include them? Well, we have something called the U6 unemployment, and that's gonna include the marginally attached plus those part-time workers. So this right in theory should give us a better idea of truly how many people are on the sidelines. And what we see is that indeed, this is the case. So the first figure that I just showed you, that headline number, that 14.7% is the purple line here. But the blue line is the U6 unemployment. And the figure here is actually at 22.8%. Sorry, my handwriting is really terrible. But that's an eight percentage point difference between the U3 and the U6 unemployment. And the people that make up that difference are the people that, again, despite not being counted in the headline number, still want a job. And that's why we really need to focus on those people because that's a critical type of uh, a policy response that we might want to see from Congress, from the Federal Reserve, from other power players to really determine how to get those people back to work when the recovery does end up happening. And one last thing I wanna bring up is that there was a nuance from the BLS that included a footnote that said, aside from the nuances that I just explained, there also may have been a data calculation error. So people that were furloughed, right? Those people that were not laid off, but they were just told to go home, but they might not be getting pay. Those people were supposed to be classified as unemployed, but the BLS may have counted them as employed, which means that 14.7% may have actually understated the true unemployment. The BLS said, and truly, if you were to count those people properly, the unemployment rate may have been a little closer to 20%. So it just shows how bad the true state of the job market is, despite what we saw in that historic job support this morning. Adam, Julie? Yeah. Brian, there were a lot of people who uh, took note of that. What they said in that addendum, you know, 5% higher had they calculated it the way they usually do. Brian Chung, thank you. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.